Every time I hear that song, it reminds me of the stars. Every time I see the stars, I would think of that song. I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's a beautiful song. I would like to bring to light a pattern I've been noticing in the government, in the churches, and in our families, and in my personal life. And that is pride. The Bible says when pride comes, then comes disgrace. In Proverbs 11.2. Throughout scripture, we see the damage of pride. We read of people in the Bible full of pride as they give themselves credit for achievements rather than to God, to whom credit is due. We especially see it in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, Pride causes disgrace in his life. In Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar said in his pride, Is this not Babylon the great, which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in his mouth, a voice spoke from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And Nebuchadnezzar went to live in the fields for seven years until acknowledgement that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives to whoever he chooses. Pride does not travel alone. It always comes with disgrace. Today we see pride rising up in the government as we watch the news, we see two parties unable to make a decision, each standing on their own position. We see the pride in our churches. We hear of churches unable to work together. Pastor against the, their church and their church against the pastor. We see pride rising up at work, at home, and in our thoughts. All around we see people carried away by their pride, being defensive on every rebuke. We may think we are not prideful, but pride wears many masks. A critical tongue, a judgmental spirit, impatience, sensitivity, seeking praise, hypocrisy, a lack of transparency, and defensiveness are just some of the masks that pride wears. I'd like to focus on defensiveness as an indicator of pride. The definition of defensiveness is a quality of being anxious to challenge or avoid criticism. Two is behavior intended to defend or protect, almost like protecting your image. Mac Tom Tomlinson wrote a blog about defensiveness, and I want to read parts of it to you guys. And he titles it, Defensive People Are Prideful. He writes, an honest and valid question, am I a defensive person? Not willing, to be corrupt, uh, not willing to be corrected is defensiveness which is rooted in pride. Defensiveness rears its ugly head whenever anyone touches a nerve in our in my soul, possibly exposing that I could be wrong about something. Defensiveness is the feeling I get when anyone challenges me on something, possibly exposing the fact that I have a blind spot. If I am defensive, pride is raising its head in me. If I am defensive, I still think I know better than anyone who disagrees with me. If I am defensive, I still am, to some real degree, unteachable. If I am defensive, I am revealing an inner attitude that I could not be wrong. If another Christian or one of my pastors comes to me to share something they feel is the need in my life, do I respond with defens defensiveness or do I quietly listen? Do I truly hear what they are saying? and make sure I understand it. Do I thank them for telling me and then examine myself before the Lord to see if it's an area of growth or change or not? 
He later writes, if I am defensive when another brother or sister in Christ says something I do not agree with, I am separating myself from the body, asserting my carnal independence from the body, and thus from the head as well. When I am defensive, I am far from being like Lord Jesus. May God save me from the wicked and ongoing evil. Jesus was never defensive, not even once, and he is calling me to put it off, die to self daily, and become defenseless with all my defense being in him alone. And I agree with Mac that defensive people are prideful. Years ago, when Alex Tyshenko and I were working in the field, he brought to light that I was defensive. And in Russian, he said, Ilya, ты очень сильно много оправдывайся. And I clearly remember seeing that defensiveness was a pattern in my life. But when I found out that defensiveness is rooted in pride, I was very defensive. I didn't think it was rooted in pride. I just thought it was something I was, it's a, like a bad, how would you say it, a bad habit. But the Holy Spirit showed me clearly that it was pride. There are times we are defensive because we want to avoid criticism. People want to explain and justify their actions, and I understand that. My fear of looking like I was wrong caused me to be defensive, which is pride. And the second part of the definition was defending and protecting your image to show that I am a know-it-all. And I struggle with that. And when I, and when you know when you make a decision and you think it's a wise decision and then somebody would walk into the room maybe 10 minutes later or maybe the next day and they start telling you exactly what you decided to do and instead of listening to the person and then seeing it as a confirmation of what you've decided but I would instead interrupt the person halfway and say, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I was going to do that. Know it all, protecting my image. Instead of listening to the person, and maybe they would have said something that would have helped you in your decision and would have made it much better. Pride, pride, pride. It has many masks, and defensiveness is one of them. Once I was able to identify it as sin, I was able to repent of it. The Bible says, once pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor, Proverbs 29, 23. Brothers and sisters, let's listen what others are accusing us of. Even if we think they are wrong, let's bring it before the Lord and say, Jesus, does, is what they have spoken against me, is it true or is any of it true? Only in humility then we're able to defeat being defensive. Maybe then our government would finally move forward. Maybe then the world would see the love in the church. And maybe then we as men would love our wives as Christ loves the church. And maybe then we would see the damage of our pride. Therefore, if we ever feel that we're getting defensive, 
Let it be an indicator of the pride within us. Let's remind ourselves of Nebuchadnezzar, whose pride brought him in a low position of disgrace. Let us humble ourselves instead, seeking God and letting him defend us. Letting God, the creator, defend us in his way and in his time. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted, Matthew 23, 12. And on the words of Nebuchadnezzar, I would like to conclude. When given the opportunity to repent, Nebuchadnezzar says, Now I praise and exalt the glory and glorify the King of Heaven, because everything he does is right, and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Amen. Let's pray.